As noted in previous episodes, the cover of a comic book is not only intended to attract attention and entice potential purchasers, much as a movie poster does, it may also, especially during wartime, contain a propaganda message. This message may be overt or hidden, or both. One means of conveying a message or evoking an emotional response is the use of codes or symbols which represent larger ideas. Such codes may be words or phrases, music, images linked to a particular national theme, historical event, or ideology. Sometimes a single symbol, letter, or visual motif is all that is needed to achieve one's goal. During the Second World War, both sides made effective use of such shorthand methods in their propaganda. While the covers of many comic books produced during the Second World War are literal, obvious, or realistic, at least in comic book terms, many others are symbolic, allegorical, or contain specific symbols and codes which convey a propaganda message. This episode shall examine some of the motifs, codes, and symbols used repeatedly on covers of comic books produced during World War II. Perhaps the most frequently used symbol or motif in wartime propaganda was the American flag. Although the cover artwork on comics was intended to sell the comic book by suggesting how exciting or interesting or funny the contents would be, some wartime covers eschewed almost any connection with the interior stories and simply went the patriotic route. However, flags were more often incorporated into symbolic or realistic scenes featuring the titles starring characters who were literally depicted as flag wavers. The cover of Speed Comics number 38, dated July 1945, is an homage to Joe Rosenthal's famous photograph of the flag raising on Mount Suribachi on Iwo Jima. The original photo was taken on February 23, 1945, which means the comic book's cover artist, possibly Bob Powell, had to draw the cover rather quickly in order for the comic to be printed and distributed by mid-May 1945. Other wartime covers showed America's enemies literally attacking the flag. Banner Comics No. 4, cover dated November 1941, depicts an enemy agent wearing the skull and crossbones insignia, a frequent substitute for the swastika in pre-Pearl Harbor days, preparing to burn the United States flag as his supporters wave signs reading, Down with America. Prize Comics 21, dated May 1942, depicts two Nazis, possibly German-American Bundists, given their uniforms and lack of armament, seizing an American flag, only to meet the patriotic fists of Yank and Doodle, who knock one Nazi into a garbage can, a not-so-subtle piece of propaganda. Many comic book covers during the war used the flag motif as a graphical backdrop, both realistically and abstractly. There were also covers which showed the American flag in realistic combat scenes, always careful to show it being bravely carried into battle. There were even superheroes whose costumes appeared to have been tailored to match the American flag. One of the earliest was The Shield, who first appeared in Pep Comics No. 1, dated January 1940. He was followed by Captain America, but they also shared a tailor with Captain Freedom, V-Man, Minuteman, American Eagle, The Eagle, Super American, U.S. Jones, Captain Flag, Major Victory, Miss America, and Yankee Doodle Jones, to name a few of the starred and striped heroes and heroines. There was even THE Flag, who appeared in the aptly named Our Flag comics. 
The American flag was a sacrosanct symbol of American democracy and was rarely depicted in any way other than gloriously fluttering in the breeze, but clearly the enemy's flags and symbols were valid targets. By abusing, desecrating, and destroying the swastika or rising sun, comic book heroes were symbolically striking at the fascists. Shattering the swastika was a repeated motif, for example. Similarly, trampling, tearing down, or destroying enemy flags was another symbolic means of portraying Allied victory over the Axis. In addition to the American flag, other American icons from history, literature, and art were utilized to evoke a feeling of patriotism. Among the objects, images, places, and motifs which appeared frequently in wartime propaganda, including comic book covers, were the Liberty Bell. And the American Bald Eagle. Linkages to American history and historical figures such as Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, pioneers, American soldiers in earlier wars, and so forth, fostered a sense of history, reinforcing the concept that America had endured difficult times before, but had triumphed through the efforts of its heroes and the common man. One often used example of a historical motif were the numerous emulations of the Spirit of 76 painting by Archibald McNeil Willard, painted around the time of America's centennial. Although not strictly a historical reference, images of Uncle Sam were prevalent during wartime. This personification of America, which originated in the early 1800s, but became best known during World War I as the result of an army recruiting poster painted by the aptly named James Montgomery Flag, appeared on numerous comic book covers during the Second World War. Quality Comics actually utilized Uncle Sam as a character in a long-running series of stories, but since the striped pants, top hat wearing, white goateed image wasn't copyrighted, other comic book publishers also used him liberally to represent the indomitable spirit of America. Two particular landmarks were frequently used by comic book artists, the United States Capitol Building in Washington, D.C., and the Statue of Liberty in New York City's harbor. The Statue of Liberty is used both in a symbolic fashion, representing American ideals under attack by fascism, and as a geographical marker, signifying that the comic book cover's action is taking place in New York City. The symbolic Statue of Liberty covers include All Winners No. 4. Here, the Timely Comics lineup of superheroes looms over a war-ravaged Earth. The United States, represented by the Statue of Liberty, is located in the central position, while France and the Soviet Union are identified by the Eiffel Tower and a hammer and sickle monument, respectively. The geographical alignment isn't exactly correct, and why France and Russia were chosen isn't clear. Possibly they represent the Western Front and the Eastern Front of the European War. But the cover is a striking design by artist Al Avison nonetheless. More realistic Statue of Liberty comic book covers include Lightning, Volume 2, Number 2, Marvel Mystery 36, a hyper-detailed diagram by Alex Schomburg, perhaps the ultimate comics cover artist of the Second World War, and Pep Comics No. 23. On the latter cover, Nazis attempt to co-opt Lady Liberty by hanging a swastika on the statue, but superheroes The Shield and The Hangman object. The covers of National Comics No. 24, Prize Comics No. 22, and Minuteman No. 2 use a similar motif, 
but depict a Japanese rather than a German attack on New York City. Such an invasion seems rather unlikely. However, these comics were on sale in early 1942, when the war in the Pacific was foremost on American minds. Though not as patriotically evocative as the Statue of Liberty, the Chrysler Building was also a recognizable New York landmark, and covers such as Wings Comics No. 53 and Zip Comics No. 22 use it as a symbol of New York City. The latter cover is a complex combination of symbols and codes. The cover date of this issue was January 1942, so it was probably on sale in November 1941, a month before the United States was at war with Nazi Germany. This didn't stop artist Irv Novick from drawing Steel Sterling, battling a giant Nazi Grim Reaper with a burning New York City in the foreground. The enormous V and the three dots and a dash Morse code representation reinforce the Allied belief in ultimate victory over the monstrous Nazi regime. Like the Statue of Liberty, the image of the Capitol building also did dual duty on comic book covers, representing both American democracy symbolically and the city of Washington, D.C. in particular. The cover of Liberty Scouts No. 2, dated June 1941, curiously suggests Nazi U-boats have sailed up the Potomac River and are disgorging tanks to invade Washington, D.C., as evidenced by images of the United States Capitol building and the Washington Monument in the background. Pep Comics No. 4 is an even earlier example of this scenario, although since it was published in early 1940, the invading tanks bear a skull insignia rather than a swastika. Fight Comics No. 15, cover dated October 1941, also shows invaders literally at the front door of the Capitol. The Capitol and the Washington Monument can be seen once more on the cover of the September 1943 issue of Wings Comics, showing giant Nazi bombers attacking Washington. While the spirited air defense of American fighter planes is to be lauded, the fact that the Nazis have been able to strike at the nation's capital with masses of warplanes is not exactly a positive thought. More heartening are images such as these, which show superheroes protectively watching over the capital and, by extension, the United States.